In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the future of integrated graphics. Well, really, it's actually right now because what you're seeing on screen is running on AMD's most powerful iGPU to date. It's known as the Radeon 8060S. We're actually at high settings, 1440p with Spider-Man 2, and this chip just happens to be inside of a 2-in-1 from ASUS known as the Flow Z13. This is powered by the all-new AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395, and of course, we've got their new integrated graphics, the 8060S, with 40 compute units. And I've already made one first look video. In that video, we actually tested this thing out, but at a much lower wattage than we're going to be testing in this video. Because over there, we actually maxed out at around 64, 65 watts. But in this one, we're going to take it well above that, closer to 90 watts, to see what we can really get out of this new APU. In this video, I've got a lot to cover and a lot to go over, but before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate windows speaking of that let's head over to a new pc that i recently built as you can see we're running windows 11 and from settings we're going to go to activation settings it's going to tell us that we're not active we don't have a key installed so we're just going to paste it right in here choose next it's going to activate windows for us and we're ready to go if you're in need of cheap windows keys i'll leave a link in the description and remember you can use code eta for 25 percent off and I'll tell you right off the bat, we've never seen an iGPU even come close to what this thing can do. AMD recently launched the Max Plus 395, and I believe at the time I'm making this video, there's only three devices on the market right now that you can get with this chip. Obviously, the Z13 Flow is the one that we have here from ASUS, and this thing is great. It's a two-in-one. It does come with a detachable keyboard. We've got a 13.4-inch Nebula display here. And this has been my go-to desktop slash portable PC for the past month and a half. I will swap over to my game capture in just a bit so we can get a better look at everything. But the first game I wanted to show off here was Spider-Man 2. If we head into the settings, you can see that we're at 1440p. And usually on iGPUs, we need to add a little bit of FSR. We've actually got this set to native 1440p, no frame generation, and I'm at high settings. One thing to note here is the driver I'm using for this APU is actually a pre-release driver. It's not an official one that I can actually update and it was released in January. So as soon as we get that official update, we might see a bit better performance, but Spider-Man 2 is a newer game. I know the devs have done a pretty good job with updating it, getting a lot of the bugs fixed. But either way, we're seeing an average of 83 FPS on an iGPU, native 1440p, no frame generation, high settings. And if you take a look at Afterburner, at the very bottom we've got the TDP. This is the CPU and GPU combined because we've got an APU with those integrated graphics. And we're up to around 85 watts here. Of course, you can take this down, but again, we're going to be maxing this thing out to see exactly what it'll do. Jumping in here a bit closer, wanted to give you a look at everything. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. Uh, this unit here has 32 gigs of LP DDR5 running at 8,000 megahertz. I've dedicated eight to that new Radeon 8060Si GPU. From Armory Crate, we do have some performance profiles we can use, our silent, performance, turbo. Turbo is up to around 65 watts, but once we go to manual and edit it, you can see we can actually take this up to a sustained 80 watt TDP. We get a two minute boost up to 92 and a 10 second boost up to 93. Basically with the built-in cooling system here, this is about what we're gonna be able to do. There are third party applications that we can take it up a bit more if we wanted to go to 125. Over on AMD's website, if you take a look at the spec sheet for this new APU, configurable TDP is from 45 up to 120. So if we wanted to, we could do 125 here. But like I mentioned, the cooling system, really around 90 watts is going to be okay. And even then, there's still times where we'll probably hit thermal throttle. But it is offering much better performance at this manual preset than it is at the turbo preset, only going up to 65. Because with more wattage here, we can get the clocks up on the GPU and CPU at the same time. We've also got some fan adjustment that we can use here. 
And so far with this thing maxed out, yeah, it's a beast. And I wanna show you some benchmarks that I ran here in manual mode. And aside from that new iGPU, the CPU here is putting down some stellar performance for a mobile chip. 16 cores, 32 threads based on Zen 5. Geekbench 6, single, 2,980. Multi, 22,653. That's crazy for a mobile chip. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Steel Nomad, highest score I was able to get out of this was 2,150. And finally, Time Spy coming in with an 11,161. And just to kind of give you an idea where this iGPU is sitting, if we take a look at the Radeon RX 7600, you can see our graphics score is coming in over 10,000. But with this new 8060 Si GPU, we're at 11,174. Now it's time to check out some more games, and the first one here, we've got Forza Horizon 5. Obviously, I had to test this one, but we're at 4K Ultra, so we're at that true Ultra preset. 4K, no FSR, no cast, no XESS. We're at a true 4K resolution on this iGPU, and this game runs great on the 8060S. Afterburner, top left-hand corner, and we're getting an average of 74 FPS. I understand that this isn't the hardest game to run, that's why I wanted to go up to 4K with it on this, but it's still really impressive to see what it's doing. Next up, we've got God of War Ragnarok, and there's a few different ways that I wanted to test this. We're at 1440 Ultra FSR set to balance, a little under 60, so let's go ahead and take it to high. I think Ultra might be a bit much for this at 1440. I know for a fact that at 1080 Ultra, it'll run all day over 60. So at high settings, we're right there on the edge and I can definitely see this dip every once in a while. Now there's a few things we could do. We could take FSR to performance, we could go down to medium, or we could enable frame generation. And that's what I'm gonna do with this game. It's actually the only game we're gonna be enabling frame gen with. And this is gonna take us way up. With frame gen on, I could disable FSR altogether and we'd have that native 1440 high settings with this. And it looks like our APU is pulling a little more than 93 watts. So I did see a jump up to around 105. I'm not exactly sure if Hardware Info is reading it correctly, or I've got a little bit of thermal leadway here. Either way, looking great here with God of War Ragnarok. And I know that frame gen isn't everybody's cup of tea, but you know, if you need it and it works out, you can definitely use it. It's here for a reason. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1440 Ultra with FSR set to auto. And to tell you the truth, I'd probably take this to FSR balanced just to make sure we don't go under 60. Because you can see we're right there, uh, mid 60s with it, getting an average of around 65 FPS. So just giving us a little bit more would help out or taking it down to high. I mean, obviously not everybody needs to run something like this at Ultra but it's still something I wanted to show off. And yeah, I mean, Cyberpunk at 1440 Ultra runs great on this 8060S. Next up, we've got Doom Eternal, 4K Ultra settings, and I did try Ultra Nightmare here at 4K. Without resolution scale at 4K, it did drop on down on us. So Ultra still looks great. This is a very well optimized game, and I knew we'd have a pretty good time with it. Still looks awesome at these settings here, and we're getting an average FPS in the mid 80s. Borderlands 3, 1440p, Ultra, and one thing that I've noticed with this game recently on newer AMD and even NVIDIA drivers are a lot of hiccups. So even on newer cards, 5000 series cards that have more than enough power at 1440p, I get a lot of micro stutters, especially in this area here. 
Uh, it's happening with the 8060S right now, and it's really annoying. I mean, uh, something I just can't look past, and I've been trying all kinds of different settings, even going down to 720p on this setup here at low settings, I'm still seeing them. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with the game itself, but either way, we're over 100 FPS on average. Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p, very high, no FSR, and I did try this at 4K. Going into it, I was actually sure we'd be able to run it pretty well, but we did need a lot of FSR at 4K. 1440 still looks great, and we're getting a steady 60 with it. I wanted to test out Fallout 4 just to make sure we're seeing good performance and we're at Ultra 1440. I was pretty sure that this was going to run steady at 60 4K, but we were in the mid 50s with it. Elden Ring, 1440p, ultra settings, this looks great, and I do not think that we're going to be able to go up to 4K on the 8060S with this one. You can see our TDP is right there, over 90 watts right now. Sometimes I see the iGPU clock get real close to 2900 megahertz, but you know, with most of the stuff on this iGPU, I haven't seen that clock max out really. Finally, Fortnite, 1440p, epic. I know some people out there might want to know if it runs, and yeah, as you can see, it does run really well on this setup here. We're averaging over 120 FPS at 1440 epic on the 8060S. So in the end, the new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 with that Radeon 8060 Si GPU is a beast. I mean, when it comes to integrated graphics, it doesn't get much better than this at the time of making this video, and I'm sure in the future we'll see something even more powerful. Personally, I'd love to see AMD come to the market with a desktop APU and an iGPU like this. I mean, after all, they did pull out of the high-end graphics card market. They're trying to serve the mid-range with their upcoming 9000 series cards, but I do think that there's a place for a desktop APU with iGPU performance like this. I think it would be great, and you could play any AAA game at 1080. You could even go up to 1440p and take some of those settings down and still have a really good time with it. But until then, this is what we have, and if you're interested in learning a little more about the ROG Flow Z13 2-in-1, I'll leave links in the description. I'll also leave links to my initial first look video. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Is something like this putting out enough performance for you in a mobile chipset? Would you be happy with a desktop APU putting out the same kind of performance? Let me know your thoughts down below. And like always, thanks for watching.